Tom Randall, one of the 2011 inductees into the CARB Hall of Fame. And I have the opportunity to be here with Mark Randall, the son of Tom Randall. And Mark, I appreciate you giving us some of your time to sit down and talk a little bit about your dad and some of the things that he accomplished in racing. I guess in 1949, uh, he was chosen the Fan of the Year at Olympic Stadium. Uh, he must have really been around Olympic quite a bit. Yes, he was. that was the place he wanted to go on Sunday night to watch the races and just be around the different people. And uh, he was a good fan, and somebody nominated him to be the Fan of the Year that year, so we have a little trophy for that. <laughs> You described Olympic pretty much as a flat track, and it just was more or less not much there. And your dad, being a part of Randall and Sons excavating, had the opportunity to go in and do some dirt work on the track, and as a result, why they wanted to uh, make him part Italian, from what I understand. Well, they kind of nominated him as a you know, an honorary Italian because he hauled the dirt in and did the work on getting the track banked. And uh, so that was, uh, he, he dealt with a lot of them. They, they drove trucks for him and different things, mm -hmm. but uh, that was his excavating business. So that that was how he first really got his hand into the Olympic Stadium. Yeah. Also in 1950, your dad buys a 48 Curtis midget race car. And he buys this from Jim Campbell, who you might say in the day, that day, was the wheeler dealer, car dealer, race car <laughs> dealer of the time. But uh, Jim sounded like he was one of those guys that bought and sold a lot of race cars. Yes, he did. He was kind of the used car dealer and uh, always had a top-notch midget. And so when the opportunity after Jim got hurt in 50, the car was for sale, and my dad bought it and uh, proceeded to race uh, at the end of 1950 in a couple of races. And also the following year, now he gets hooked up with Bob Slater, and that really becomes a winning team there. They really have a successful year, I believe it was, in 1951. Yes, they did. They started off the, the beginning of the season with Bob as the driver, and he was – an excellent combination. He knew how to set the car up, and my dad was a good mechanic on the car, and it was a tough season, but they, they won the championship, and that was quite a, you know, to win at Olympic Stadium and then to win the championship was really something. Yeah. You know, thinking back into that era, and for your dad to come into the sport like that and to succeed so fast, uh, there must have been some people that were helping him out. I mean, uh, there had to be some fellow drivers or mechanics or whatever that helped your dad out because to come into the sport and, and just not have that know-how, why, he must have picked it up from somebody. Vito Calia helped my dad a lot, and Tutti Galata, and several of the other mechanics around K Kansas City uh, gave him some advice on how to work on off the engines and they were they were something different but my dad was a mechanic and somebody show him how to do it yeah. he, he could do it and so yeah. he uh, he learned and, and uh, become a you know very good mechanic on it and they, they didn't drop out of many races in, in 51. Boy that's a big deal I mean especially when you're going to win a, a championship you've got to have everything in top-notch shape I mean top to bottom in order to finish every race like that yeah you, you have to have the car really set up good and running good because the way they did it at olympic yeah you started at the back the fast guy started at the back so you you had to really work to win a race out there boy it was small and tight wasn't it <laughs> it certainly was it was non-stop action yeah about the mid-year of 52 then your dad purchases a 50 or i'm sorry i'm not particular year but a Curtis sprint car and uh, kind of during 52 while uh, they kind of start building the car getting it ready for the 53 season uh, what do you think uh, was the reasoning behind that was your dad wanting to move up a class I mean I'm sure back then it's like it is now I'm not going to place them in any order but I think everybody wants to move on up to the sprint cars eventually is that what your dad's thoughts were well, that was what uh, Bob Slater wanted. He wanted to move on up, and uh, so in 52, they put a sprint car together, 
and uh, were very successful with it. And out of, at the half, started in '52 at the mid-season, and ran uh, 21 races and won 11 of them with it. And uh, so they they did really well there. They didn't win the championship, but they were fourth in the points. So and then '53, uh, Bob went on and bought his own car, and my dad hired uh, Mac McHenry to drive for him in '53, and several other people. You know, we talk a lot about the costs of uh, racing nowadays. Uh, going back to that time period, uh, I know your dad bought a new Offy. What was the selling price for that Offy engine? The bill of sale that I have on it was right at $6,000. And uh, that was a lot of money for my grandfather to spend. He wasn't too sure about spending it on a, an engine. He could buy a dump truck or a bulldozer. And, but anyway, that was that was quite a bit of money, but mm. that's what they cost. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you could say uh, the cost of living has gone up, so has the cost of racing. I, I don't know if the government ever includes that in there, but <laughs> I seriously doubt it. But still, it just shows you that even back in those days, like you say, that was probably a year's wages for a whole lot of people. Uh, that's six grand. Definitely it was. That was... Uh, pretty tough on them to do it but they the engine they had before wasn't very good and they wanted to get a really good one and uh, and see how that went but it 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 paid off it paid off so and they they ran quite a bit around the country i i think you've mentioned they went to tampa and like you say lincoln i saw one of the articles you were showing me south dakota Uh, they did a lot of traveling yeah they went to salt lake city utah uh Birmingham, Alabama, Shreveport, Louisiana, Nashville. Uh, they, they did a lot of racing around yeah. Sedalia. Of course, was one of the big ones, and Des Moines was the, the top. Oh, was it? Top, yeah. one of the, the best tracks. At, uh, the state fairs were the big payers. Mm-hmm. They, that was where the money was at, state fairs. And just like a lot of people nowadays, chase the money. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> went where the money was. and That was, uh, you know, my dad... He wanted it to pay its way, yeah. and so it, it did pretty well. Yeah. In 58-59, your dad has um, Herschel Wagner driving for him, and this is also about the time that the V8s are starting to come out into sprint car racing, and boy, I mean, when they came on the scene, the, the Offenhausers, I wouldn't say took a absolute back seat, but I mean, the Chevys really did a number on them. Well, they definitely, uh, they revolutionized the racing. It was just a lot cheaper to uh-huh. run a Chevrolet. You could go to a junkyard and, and get a Chevrolet engine. You didn't have to spend $6,000 for one. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, uh, that that took the toll from, oh, they st- off he still won, you know, through 59 and 60. And uh, up until early 60s they still won the championship mm. in IMCA but the Chevrolets were there mm. and it just uh, uh, my, da- my dad wasn't going to give up his offie though he was going <laughs> to keep running that until it quit no matter 1960 Carl Williams is driving the car and he's at Belleville and they go over the fence out in the pasture or whatever and that more or less signals the end for your dad your dad had a 10 year period in there I know he was having some health issues. I know the economy probably wasn't getting any better. And there again, the V8s were coming on the scene. Was that more or less the end for your dad? I think he just kind of realized that it was a little hard for him to chase after it. And uh, just, I don't know, the, the burning desire wasn't quite there. And so he just had enough of it and on the way home from Belleville he just said well that's it I'm going to sell it uh-huh. and he did and so that was that was kind of the end of the race car owning for him mm-hmm. but uh, he uh, still he went to a lot of races we went to a lot of different uh, championship car races and mm-hmm. all, all kinds of open wheel he was purely an open wheel race fan yeah. Kind of ended his career the way he started it as a race fan. Yes, he did. Yeah. And as long as he was still healthy and able to go, we'd, he'd go to the races. And yeah, yeah he, he, he was definitely a race fan. Yeah. 
Well, folks, I uh, want to wrap it up here. Once again, uh, Tom Randall being inducted into the CARB Hall of Fame. And, Mark, once again, let me thank you for taking your time to sit down and talk with us about your dad and the cars and the racing and all that. And uh, I know it's been uh, it's been a good ride for you, too. Thank you for doing it. I'm, I'm glad to get inducted, and, uh, you know, it's a real honor for us. Thank you. Okay.